Hey, hey, how's it going today, everybody? I'm going to do a quick little uh, video uh, for a couple of upgrades on our my little editing desk thing I got going on here. It's um, <laughs> kind of just a bunch of stuff I've cobbled together over time. But uh, one of the big struggles has been audio, so I want to do some upgrades there. I'm um, going to add a mini DSP to the output section so that I can flatten the frequency response on my monitors. It's pretty important to me. Um, audio guy by trade, so really don't have a lot of excuses for that. And a little power supply distribution thing. One of these. It's just a rack mount guy. Lots of outlets on the back. Switch on the front. Turn it all on and off all at the same time. A couple outlets on the front, that'll be handy. And the mini DSP, big fun. Two in, four out. Basically, we'll just route signal through this and then uh, take two taps off to my monitors, and then that'll leave two outputs for adding a subwoofer, which I'll get around to that. That'll be another fun video for us. So we'll get that in there, maybe show you guys how we tune it and all that. We'll see how it goes. And last but not least, a uh, little unboxing here. So let's get on that right now. Oh, and this is the editing desk right here. That's what I'm working with. Um, it rolls around. It's kind of a handy dandy little thing. Anyway, it's my home shop. Let's get on with some unboxing. Time for a little unboxing. What do we have here? Ah, the Ceremonic Pawn Shop Special. So basically what this is, if, if you don't already know, is a uh, pair of transmitters. It'll each take a lapel mic, clip those right on you, and a receiver. And this is all wireless, so you can just clip this on your camera and be able to record hopefully it's in stereo i don't know if it is or not but we'll figure that out looks like it takes ooh, double a batteries yay those always last longer than nine volts nice clip on it it'd be nice if it had a camera clip for like the hot foot but it uh, doesn't seem to have that and the transmitters pretty legit little aluminum housing on there. That's kind of why I grabbed this one. It looked like it was better than the one of the other brands. But, uh, don't know anything about these guys. As far as the brand goes, Ceramonic. I'm sure it's made in China. Yep. And it's not uh, clearly not one of the top brands out there that I'm used to seeing in the pro world. But I think for what I'm doing here, it's going to be great. So we'll get that hooked up and uh, We'll move on and hopefully the audio will improve in the process. All right, I'm going to do a, <clears throat> do a couple more little things here. Got some pro cells. It's pretty straightforward. Load some double A's in it. Imagine we'll have to program the frequencies. Mm, that one goes that way. And that one goes that way. All right. Power. Oh, look at that. It lit up. Ceremonic. Wow, fancy. So this is the receiver here. So this will be, ooh, look at that, A and B, sweet. Well, hopefully we can get both of those to go. Battery indicator, antenna indicators. Looks pretty legit. I think I'm pretty happy. So the next thing we'll have to do is we'll have to connect that to the receiver to the camera. Um, you could probably also put these into a little zoom or what have you. Wow, this thing seems to be brand new. Good uh, pawn shop score. I'm clearly not going to be paying list price on this. 
Yeah, it's got the screw down style of those. I like that. That's a legitimate solid connection. Um, I don't have any experience with any other ones of these, so hopefully this one is the the is all the end all. Now we'll throw some batteries in a transmitter. like that. Alright, let's power you on. Now, oh, looky there. Let's see, group A. Hey, look at that. It came to life. Wow, it's got a nice little level meter too. Alright, let's get this clipped on. Um, oh, lots of little settings here. I have not read the directions on this, so I'm just kind of winging it. And hopefully I don't screw it up and have to reprogram everything. So, rather than do that, we'll power it down. Power it back up again, make sure it's getting connected. Now well, look at that. Alright, let's get this hung on me and we'll check levels. Level check, level check. Level check. Looks pretty good. I think we'll run with it. All right, we'll switch over to this puppy and see if that improves the uh, audio in our video as we move around the room. As you can see, as we get away from it all, it's kind of starting to suck. So maybe this will make it all better. All right. All right, we're back in business and now I've got a lapel mic hanging on me. So hopefully it, uh, it's going to be a little better. All right, let's move on to my little desk over here and we'll strip everything out of it and start putting in the new stuff. Good times. All right, looks like we're all set up there. Let's see, first step is going to be to strip this thing down, get uh, I mean, kind of out of here. I'm really not very good about, you know, shutting things down and all that. So what we'll do is we'll just unplug it. Boom. It's off. And I'm going to clean up this. Here, let's bring you all around here. It would be much better on this side for this part of it. As you can see, it's just kind of a mess back here. I do have my little my little sack thing to hold the cables, which is kind of cool. All right. You know, I think what we'll do is we're just going to strip it down to nothing. Imagine I'll time lapse this in the post. I'm using a Canon uh, 70D, which I believe doesn't do time lapse. It's kind of a bummer, but hey, another. Uh, pawn shop deal, so can't complain too much. Let's see, I think basically all we're after here is power. Starters. Uh oh, dog wants in. You can see the outlets add up in a hurry. Um, <laughs> And four full here plus another two banger over there. So that was kind of crazy. All right. We'll talk about the signal path on Mini DSP when we get to that here in just a minute. But power comes first. And I ran out of rack rail to put a little set of rack screw downs on this. So I'm just gonna have to suffer through. Maybe I'll Velcro it or screw it down or do something to hang on to it here. 
Anyway, lots of outputs. This thing's got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve outputs if you include the two on the front. So this is going to be kind of awesome. I'll be able to hook up everything. Not sure if they're switched or unswitched. But we'll find out soon enough. And got these little fellas. Kind of my whole point in doing this is we've got we get a fair amount of activity going on in here in the summertime, so it's important for me to be able to kind of roll this thing around and do what I need to do. There. Well, that's better. You got time to let the dogs in. Get in here, you crazy hounds. It's the hounds of hell. All right. Let's see. So that's the power. That was easy enough. Let's move on to the mini DSP. I do kind of love these. Let's see here. Where am I going to want to put this? Let me walk around here and figure this out. See where I ultimately want that to live. It doesn't really need to be seen. All it needs to be is just present. Well, not quite fit there. Have to keep it on the audio side of things. Well, I think that'll be a good spot for it. If you guys are not familiar with Mini DSP, they make a, a nice selection of pretty cool, reasonably priced DSP stuff. It's uh, kind of super reasonably priced, actually. So I'm grabbing the outputs. Get you in the game here. All right, so I'm grabbing the outputs from the from the focus right, and one is left, two is right. That's easy enough to remember. And I have a little conversion here to RCA, which is kind of kind of punter, but for me, I think a good EQing of my monitors is more important than ultimate uh, ultimate sonic clarity of having balanced so I am good with that and this little guy is he's USB powered and controlled so it'll be easy enough to power in USB all at the same time and I'm going to want to home run him I'm not going to run him through the hub because he'll be kind of always present much like your keyboard and your mouse and this little mic's working okay. Let me move him around a little bit. He's kind of falling away here. Let's try. Get a little bit closer to my... There we go. Maybe a little closer to my, my throat there. <laughs> All right. Always a good time to grab a pair of Epic Audio cables. These are uh, <laughs> really good cables. Don't let the price tag fool you. They're worth it. Right, Roxy? They're worth it. All right, and I don't remember how these are laid out, but I think one and three is how you can pair them up. So white is always left. So you just basically route through this. We got the signal coming from the outputs of the focus right into the mini DSP, out of the mini DSP, straight into the monitors. And that is that. Let's back up a little bit here. 
Pretty simple hookup. And I just keep stacking it on. Let's see. I was trying to have this not be a mess, but Got those pretty epic wires going on here. I don't mind showing those off because they're kind of sexy and cool. And we'll go that way with you. I might Velcro that down or something. It's got little feet, but it doesn't want to stay put. That's all right. It'll be good enough. All right. Well, that's basically the... Uh, hardware part of this operation. Now we can move on to plugging it in and working with the DSP, get that balanced out. There's a couple more little pieces that go to it. There's a microphone that goes with it. And we'll put that on a stand and do some reference traces and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the next part of the project here is the reference mic. So basically what it's going to do is listen to our little speakers here for us and it'll send a trace out through some software. We'll have to do a couple other little things along the way as well. Helps if you turn it on. There we go. All right. It's a mini DSP U mic. You mic one, USB, self-powered, straight, uh, straight into my computer rig here. Easy enough. We'll basically, just want to position this in my ultimate listening position here. Little U mics, uh, I think they're 99 bucks. Nothing too extreme. Worth every penny of it, if you ask me. The whole system as a whole works out pretty good. All right. So there's an app that goes along with this there. Our whole DSP reference scenario is hooked up right now. Let me get this out of my way for a minute. Just want to load up some software and stuff. Oh boy, we're on a cold boot here. Let's take a little break. I'll get this thing booted up. All right, so one of the first steps we got to do is uh, mini DSP is plug-in based. So I'll have to go to their website here real quick. I've got an account. We'll log into that and I'll download the appropriate plug-in for the DSP that we have. Easy enough. So once you got an account set up, um, you kind of you download your plugins. Uh, super easy, they stay there. You can collect them anytime you need them. If you're out on the road or whatever, you can just log in and grab them. Um, not that I use mini DSP on the road, but maybe someday. Yeah, we're looking for the mini DSP plugins. Ooh. Got a little maintenance update. Let's go for the latest and greatest. Mini DSP Advanced. We'll take it. Relatively small files. Won't take long to put this in and boot it up. Works with both Mac and Windows.
ta-da. That was easy. I'll keep that for today. Two by four advanced. We need the SP. All right. Connecting. I'm gonna do a restore to default. Done. All right. Let's look at routing. One and three. Perfect. We want to go to Room EQ Wizard. So the microphone's got a calibration file. When you buy the mic, uh, you send a punch a number into the website and it will give you the calibration file. So you can just put that in your, you know, in your desktop or whatever. It calibrates the mic and it calibrates it for SPL, which is super sweet. So let's start off with just a quick measurement, get some levels. I'm gonna go from zero to 20,000 Hertz. Third octave smoothing for this operation. Um, you can get a lot more in depth with it, but if what I'm doing here today, that's gonna to be a little pointless. Um, we just wanna flatten these out enough for, for making video. That's really all we're after. Let's swing the mic around here and get a good reference trace going. Um, dead center, right about where your head's gonna be. And I like to do the height being equal with the tweeters. Big old lump of 160. That was really bugging me last night when I was garage banding out here. So we'll clean that up and try to get it to be a little more of a flat response. It might be a little bit confused as to whether or not my camera is on. Anyway, so we did two traces here. We did one that was kind of off axis uh, with the mic swung around sideways. And then we did this one. And surprisingly, pretty similar. Um, we could do a quick little series of measurements I'm not that worried about it today, uh, especially while I'm here making a video. It, uh, you know, it's going to take a lot of time. I don't want to burn up that much YouTube. That stuff's expensive, right? So it looks like the biggest challenge is in the mid-range. So let's mute one side here and take another sweep and see if that's a mic position thing. Well, quite similar. Um, imagine if we pulled a tape measure, we'd probably find it to be pretty darn even. And that is both of our traces stacked one side to the other, so pretty darn good. No complaints with the uh, little Fostex monitors. Well, and because we're just a stereo source here, we're just gonna do some real quick stuff. Our little EQ here. Let's start by getting this big ass bass knob out of here. 167 hertz. And it looks like we can give up about 6 dB of that, a Q of about 2. So let's try that. I'm going to leave a little room for cleaning up maybe some bass boost. So we'll go up to the second EQ filter. Let me zoom in on this a little bit for you guys. Well, not the most ideal, but it'll be enough to give you a general idea how awesome this tool is. All right, 167 hertz. And we said we want to go minus six. The Q of two. There we go. Well, let's make sure we're banging both sides. Yep. And now we're going to copy that to input two. Boom. See what we did. Ah, flatter-ish. Uh-oh, boss is here. All right, so that one little filter did a pretty good job of getting that 167 beat down. 
which was about there. I got another little bump here I might work with. 111. I'll kick that one down too. I'm going to go minus two on that one. Probably a super tight Q, like a Q of three. There we go. And copy to the other input. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, not bad. Next thing on my list is going to be this big, chunky bunch of high end I don't really want to hear. It's just not going to sound natural, so we'll get rid of that. And that's probably going to take two filters. Let's get the wide one first. Which is 4630. And probably about a minus three on that. A little tighter on the Q. Yeah, Q will one. Copy the other input. Sweep it again. Hmm. It's getting better already. Yeah, I think that one needs to be a little, a little tighter. Sweep it again. Yeah, so it rolls off pretty hard in that 8K range, so I think I'll try to boost that up a little bit here. We'll do a do a high shelf. 13K, probably about a plus 12. Yeah, let's try that. See if this even has a response up that far. It'll be good to know anyway. Crazy. So we didn't need a shelf. What we needed was a peak. Let's try that. Hmm. Holy mac. <laughs> Let's try a plus six instead of a plus 12. That responded to that very, very well. I uh, must say the little Fostex monitors are not too bad. Now, well, look at that. Okay. So I got one filter left on the inputs. I think probably what we need to do is a, a little bit of a boost right here in the middle. I normally don't like to boost, but I think in this instance it's going to need it. Hmm. Well, there you go. So that's what we ended up with using basically five filters in 15 minutes and $175 spent to clean these little monitors up. So we went from that to that and easy enough to see what's going to be better. So well worth it. Uh, we can do more from here. There is also EQ on the output, so we have five more filters on each one. Um, same process, you can go through and fine tune it. We can probably 
bump up these two little mid-range knobs easily enough. And you know, what the heck, we might as well. It only takes a minute. 736. Looks like it's going to want a plus three. And it's going to be a pretty tight cue, like about three. Copy to output three. Go over here and verify that did what it was supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> well, that went just crazy, so let's not do that. Mid-range is tough, and probably what we're dealing with is an unequal distance between the, the two speakers and the microphone. And my head's here, the camera's here, and there's a pellet stove running in the background. Probably not the best time to be getting any deeper on that. Anyway, there you have it. That's Mini DSP. Um, works super well. I swear by it. I use it on just about everything that... Uh, is in my home listening environment. I got one of their more elaborate ones on my, <laughs> my shop stereo, but I typically always have one on my desktop and it, it, it's just there, it cleans up. It's one of those things that's in my, my pro world that I kind of just can't live without. So really enjoy having the EQ. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and comment and thumbs up if you like it. Thanks for watching.